How you feel about this version of Monk? This is by far my favorite version of monk i've ever played i would say fist weaving is easily or dragonflight fist weaving is easily the most fun i've ever had playing monk and i hope they keep expanding it and i hope it's you know keeps going well and, and it's good to play and fun as it is now yo what's going on everybody this is mystical today i am bringing you a fist weaving guide for 10.0.5 there has been a huge surge in popularity with fist weaving we've seen the awc a lot of top players in solo shuffle or a lot of top misweavers in solo shuffle or fist weaving so i thought i would do an updated guide for 10.0.5 because i updated some talents and with that said let's jump right into the video First, I want to start off with why you'd want to fist weave in the first place. It is really, really fun. I cannot express this enough. It is easily the most fun playstyle you'll ever play in this game. I'm not even kidding. Hands down, I have stopped casting healing almost entirely because I just love fist weaving so much. And I've been fist weaving since uh, about like Shaolin's. Shaolin season one when they came with the ancient teachings of the monastery legendary. Um, I was fist weaving as much as I could in PvP. It wasn't that good. And with the introduction in, of Dragonflight, what they did is they have added talents to Mistweaver that makes it more of a play style rather than just like a one one-off talent or something because before we were in that shiji but now we have an actual play style that is viable it is so much fun you do so much damage and the best part is not a lot of people know how to play around it which is why i think it's so good right now <laughs> i don't think a lot of people know how to counter miss weaver when it comes to fist weaving or if they do know how it's really hard to coordinate so and so shuffle it's still hard to counter it um so overall a lot of fun people don't know how to play around it and you do so much damage and you actually feel like you're contributing to a kill the best race is really comes down to what the meta is. And right now, the meta is just Assassination Rogue. So right now, I would highly recommend going Dark Iron Dwarf. This is what I am on my Fist Weaving Monk. Uh, it's really good. You get the Fire Blood Racial, which dispels all bleeds, poisons, it curses on you and then you get a huge stat buff so that stat buff is your intellect and you could do insane damage if you dispel a ton of you know bleeds dots all that all harmful effects if you don't want to go dark iron dwarf that's fine uh, on the alliance side human is pretty good you can technically run the double trinket and you can because you'll still have the will to survive uh, racial which gets you out of stuns so you could technically run the on use and the proc trinket which is really solid night elf is really good i'm pretty sure night elf gives you haste which haste is what you want i'll talk about it later but night elf is good for avoiding cc on you it doesn't really provide much survivability because you're kind of going to be in the fight but you know night elf is still good plus aesthetically you know transmog looks good on them outside of that i don't find any other i mean dwarf is the same as dark iron dwarf you know you can go dwarf or dark iron dwarf the ratio is very similar so either one works in this meta uh, again racials really depend on the meta uh, as far as horde goes i have not really played much out in my horde fist weaver uh, undead will be good just because warlock's really popular right now and it looks like they just got some insane rounds of buffs in 10.0.7 so uh, you know you're gonna get fear a lot undead's pretty good orc always solid you know even with the 15 percent cc reduction you'll have 20 percent reduction in stuns you are gonna be in the fight so any kind of stun reduction is nice um outside of that i don't see much use for any other racial technically troll does have a haste buff so you could go troll get the haste buff and you know it you could crank a bunch of damage so i uh, troll orc undead probably your best bet um and then on the alliance, on the horde side, and on the on the alliance side, I would highly recommend with how like you know assassination heavy meta this is, I would go dwarf, dark iron dwarf. If not, you can go human, night elf. Even gnome is pretty solid. Before we talk about gearing or talents, I want to talk about when you should fist weave. So the most popular game mode right now is solo shuffle, and the most important thing to do in solo shuffle is damage. That's what you want to do. You want to do damage. And it just so happens, Fist Weaving does quite a bit of damage. So I would recommend Fist Weaving for Solo Shuffle, 100%. Would I recommend it more than the casted Miss, like Miss Weaver? It's up to you. It it really depends on the play style. In my opinion, I think Fist Weaver is more difficult to learn, more difficult to play, but it will get you more, get you higher rated once you get it down and practice it. And again, when I tell you practice, I've practiced, I've literally spent hours practicing my rotation on dummies here. I, I have. And if you can, pra if you put the practice in, I th you'll get higher rated fist weaving. I, I truly believe it. Now, as far as the war arena goes, it's really good in twos. If you find somebody that has uh, consistent stuns, I'm talking ass rogue, even subtlety rogue, outlaw rogue, <laughs> any rogue, uh, feral druids have a consistent stun with maim. So you could, you know, 
go with a feral druid demo warlocks have are surprisingly really good because they have stuns so anything with a consistent stun, because if it, you're if you're there you're relying on you you only have a 50 second you have a one stun on a 50 second cooldown so you know um anything with a consistent stun that can keep them themselves alive warriors as well um play within twos in threes again Pick the two tankiest classes and try to run with it. I, I, you know, I we've seen Brewmaster, but if you don't know any tanks like me, play Turbo with Enhancement Shaman Arms Warriors, really good. Demon Hunter DK, which is Hero Cleave, really, really good because they can both keep themselves alive. If you want to play with the caster, I think your only option is probably Demon Warlock because they're super tanky. Maybe Dash Warlock too is good too, but um, anything with double melee essentially or any classes that keep themselves alive, you could probably fist weave. All right, so you just hit 70 on your Mist Weaver. You pick some race that you enjoy, and now you want to gear. So your stats are going to be Versatility, Haste, Crit, Mastery. Those are your stats. Always first Haste for gear on the PvP vendor. Most of the gear slot, the slots have the Haste verse on it, so you really don't have to worry about making crafting orders. However, I would recommend maybe probably make doing a crafting order for the ring. Huge Haste. Huge verse. Obviously, it'll scale up once you get farm out a bunch of the primal focuses and the concentrated primal focus because um, it's low item level at first. But I would highly recommend haste verse for everything. Very, very good. As far as gems go, you want to go for survivability. So stam and verse is really good. You could even go haste verse if you wanted to. But if you're doing this primarily for solo shuffle, you really want to just prioritize surviving because dampening ramps up so high. So haste verse gems. I got this idea from Bank, who's another fist weaver. Really, really good idea. Just go for survivability because you're going to be in the fight uh, the whole time as far as the leg and chance all that goes i go for reserve of intellect on my chest which gives me uh intellect and i think mana and then for the legs i go for intellect and stamina again try to prioritize survivability and then on my rings i go haste uh on my weapon i go wafting devotion which is the haste proc i think there's an intellect buff too i think that's so thick something like that um i like the haste buff because you just can you just you get like 77 percent haste if you do that with uh alpha tiger which i'll talk about later um but Again, overall, you're prioritizing haste verse. A common question I get is tier worth it? I, in my opinion, it is not worth it at all. I don't run tier on my fist weaver. The tier set is mostly based around vivify and essence font, two spells that you really don't use, especially the vivify. So no, I do not use tier sets. I don't recommend using tier sets. I think the only piece of gear, the only slot that has decent haste is I think the helm. If I just check it real quick. I should be able to see. So, yeah, the helm has huge haste, but you lose a ton of versatility. 416 verse, just not worth it. Uh, some haste on the shoulders. Chest doesn't have any. Gloves don't have any. Legs don't have any. So, I would recommend not going with the tier set, mostly because it's based around your Vivify, and the stats are really bad. All right, and now we have the talent. So, I'll start with the left-hand side and move to the right-hand side. I'm trying to point out anything that's important. The left-hand side... Nothing too crazy going on here. What you're focusing on is damage. So that's why you're going with Fury, Ferocity of Zhuen, which increases all damage up by 4%, and Fast Feet, which increases the damage of Rising Sun Kick by 70%, and Spinning Crane Kick by 10%. That one doesn't matter too much. You're mostly focused on the Rising Sun Kick. Um, outside that, shorter cooldown on Leg Sweep is nice, and increase the Radius, because you know, anytime you can get a double, even a triple stun, the more you get so much value out of leg sweep. So good. We do run disable with this build. You can opt to drop this if you really want to. If you're playing with a class like a death knight that has chains of ice or you know a spamble slow, some kind of spamble slow, feel free to drop it. That's okay. If you're gonna drop it, you could probably go into escape from reality. But for the most part, I just play disable. Um I play, I think I play, yeah, I play long fort brew uh, because mostly you're using this build in solo shuffle. So you're never, you're going to use, only you're going to use fort brew once, right? In a match. You're, I've never seen a solo shuffle go past, past like three and a half minutes. So um, fort brew, I just go for the longer version for the increased armor and dodge. I don't know if it helps that much, but all I know is, you know, I can only use it once. So why not? Outside of that, nothing else too crazy going on here. Close to heart is really good. This is this makes you and your allies within 10 yards have 8% increased healing taken from all sources. So, you know, that's basically 8% buff to healing, which is great because you're going to be in the fight. Uh, even if you're ranged, uh, maybe they'll kind of play far away, but they should still be relatively close. And that's pretty much it for the left-hand side. Nothing too crazy going on. I do play Chi Wave, really good for getting, for keeping druids and rogues in combat, but also getting in combat with druids and rogues if they are out of stealth or something like that. Really good for hitting a teammate or an enemy that might have a rogue on the team that you know Chi Wave can hit it and you can get in combat. I don't play any Vivify talents at all, 
don't play really too many expel harm i wish i could get strength of spirit but uh there's really too much going on here you definitely need both dispel dampen harm and diffuse magic because uh, you're gonna be taking a lot of damage teams are gonna try to swap to you and that's pretty much it nothing too crazy on the left hand side pretty much standard build going for damage going for survivability on the right hand side is when we start to have a little bit of fun so obviously you start with your enveloping mist, get your essence font because you kind of have to get your thunder focus tea. Renewing mist is your primary hot, so you get your renewing mist. And then this is kind of interesting because even on uh, my cast and monk, I started playing a little bit, but restoral is basically a revival that you could use while stunned, but you ca it does not dispel any magical effects. So, for example, revival, what you could do, you can't use it while stunned, but it can like dispel a stable affliction, it can dispel polymorphs. Restore doesn't do that. Restore only dispels poisons and disease effects, but you could use while stunned. So keep that in mind. It works really well with Peace Weaver. I'll explain as well what that is um, once I get to the PvP talents. But basically, with Peace Weaver makes you immune to magical damage effects, magic effects for two seconds. So if you use it while stunned, you're immune for two seconds to magic damage. Now from there, you get your life cocoon. You get the teachings of the monastery. So teachings of the monastery, Tiger Palm causes your next blackout kick to strike an additional time, stacking up to three times. This may also makes blackout kick has a 15% chance to reset the remaining cooldown on rising sun kick. So what that means is if you build up, use your Tiger Palm to build up blackout kicks, you can get a reset on your rising sun kick. And I'll have a whole section after this about important talents to keep in mind. Um, Teach Spirit of the Crane makes it so those additional blackout kicks from this last passive gives you mana. Really, really good. This is why mana really isn't much of an issue when you're fish weaving, fist, fish weaving, fist weaving. Uh, Nourishing Chi makes Life Cocoon, you know, uh, give you a buff after it expires for 10 second tap to make sure hot's better. Uh, for this one, you actually want this. Um, you want the burst of life talent that they just added. What it does, it, re it reduces the absorption on your life cocoon by 40%, but it reduces the cooldown by 20 seconds. And this stacks with Chrysalis. So what you're going to do is you're going to play Chrysalis, which reduces the cooldown of life cocoon by 45 seconds, play burst of life that reduces the cooldown of life cocoon by 20 seconds, and boom, you have a 55 second life cocoon, which is really good. It allows you to stay in the fight, stay more aggressive, keep your teammates aggressive. And then when it, when it expires or when it gets, you know, killed through, it'll burst and it'll do a bunch of healing to your teammates. This is where we get to the failure, the the burst of life. This is where we get into the fist weaving. Um, I'll, I'll talk about this after, but we go down here. We get the overflowing mist. So overflowing mist makes it so enveloping mist heals the target for 2% of their max health each time they take damage. Very, very important. I throw an enveloping mist up. Boom. I get the hot. It's important to remember it's a hot, though. I'll talk about that as well. Uh, obviously, you want Chi-Gi. This makes it so... This is a pretty... Big cooldown, and with this cooldown, with the uh, gift of celestials, it's a one minute cooldown. This is what makes your enveloping mist instant. Overflowing mist, mist wrap. All right, so age teachings. This is the spell right here. After casting essence font or failing stomp, your tiger palm, blackout kick, and rising sun kick heal an injured ally within 30 yards for 150% of the damage done in PvP. If I remember correctly. It is 375% of the damage done. It is not 150. It's crazy. It's insane. But that's what it is. It's awesome. So from there, you're going to get Misty Peaks, which makes it so your Renewing Mist uh, Heal Over Time Effect has a 10% chance to proc and Enveloping Mist. So that's really good. And then Rising Mist. So Rising Mist, this is a little... This is a secret tech right here, which is insane. I'll show you a little tip with it right now. So what Rising Mist does is Rising Sun Kick heals all allies with your Renewing Mist, Enveloping Mist, or Essence Font for X amount and extends those effects by four seconds up to 100% of the original duration. What that means is the duration of Envelope Mist is what, eight seconds, I believe, eight or seven. Let me see, seven seconds. Um, you can extend that up to 14 seconds. But what you can also do is remember this talent right here, this overflowing this overflowing mist that makes it so Envelope Mist heal, target for 2% of the maximum health each time to take damage. That's a hot. That gets extended with Envelope Mist. So, what you do is you put an envelope mist up, you get the overflowing mist, and all you're going to do is you're going to rising sun kick, extend both those hots, and you could do that twice because, again, um, it extends it, but only up to 100%. So I can't extend it a third time. But hopefully by that time, you have another envelope mist maybe with Chi-Gi, and you could just keep doing that over and over again. So keep that in mind. Your rising mist does extend the overflowing mist hot when you put an envelope mist on somebody. Really good trick there. Um, another little talent over here. Uh, is rapid diffusion when you rising sun kick or enveloping mist they will apply renewing mist for six seconds and that again can also get extended by your uh, rising mist and then over here in this bottom left hand corner we got some like the the most important part of fist weaving are these talents right here 
So you start off by getting failing stomp. What this does is it will hit the ground, has a 30 second cooldown, and it will do a little bit of healing, do a little bit of damage. And if you are in it, you have a, your abilities have a 6% chance to reset the cooldown of failing stomp. And that in itself doesn't matter. But then you get down here, and this makes it so your blackout kick strike three targets and have an additional 10% chance to reset the cooldown of rising sun kick while within your failing stomp. And then finally, we have our Lake Awaken Failing, which makes it so your abilities reset Failing Stomp 100% more often. While within your Failing Stomp, your Tiger Palm Strike twice and your Spinning, spinning Crane Kick, you know, heals three out number Alice for 70% of the damage done. The Spinning Crane Kick Park really doesn't matter. What matters is that Tiger Palm strikes twice. So let's put it all together now. So we have this talent right here, which is Teaching the Monastery, which makes it so Tiger Palm causes your next Blackout Kick to strike an additional time, which is these stacks right here. The, uh, boom. The teaching of the monastery. And then we have failing stomp, where if we're in our failing stomp, our blackout kick strikes three additional targets. And then there's a ink more of an ink there's a hundred percent more often chance that if we're in our failing stomp, it will get reset. So and tiger palm strikes twice. So if I so right here, if I don't failing stomp, my tiger palm only stacks one time. Okay? Failing stomp and I tiger palm it casts twice. So you'll see with my damage. Maybe it reset. I cast it once. It hit three times because it hits additional targets. From there, I have these stacks, and I can just blackout kick. And you can see I only pressed it one time, but it hits three additional targets. So I press blackout kick, right? I cast it once. It hit nine times. Cast it once, hit three times. So this is the normal one, and then this is the, the buff that we get. So I cast a blackout kick one time, and it hit 12 times. That's crazy. And this is even with Rising Sun Kick. So keep that in mind. Rising Sun Kick is your priority. And I'll talk about the rotation once we get there. But I just want to talk about the important talents. But that's pretty much it for the talents on the right-hand side and left-hand side. These really don't change. The talents, I would say, these are pretty set in stone. Uh, at least on the right-hand side, there's not much wiggle room. Because you need pretty much everything here. Um, yeah, if you think of something that, that you know I'm missing or some talent, please let me know. I am more than happy to try any build you have, but this is what I have the most success with, success with. All right, now we have PvP talents. There are two that I really never change, and that is Chrysalis and Alpha Tiger. So what Chrysalis does is it reduces the cooldown of life cuckoo by 45 seconds. No brainer. It stacks with Burst of Life. You have a 55 life, 55 second life cocoon. Crazy good to keep you aggressive or your team aggressive and stay in the fight. Uh, Alpha Tiger, what this does is attacking new challengers with Tiger Palm fills you with Spirit of Yuan, granting you 20% haste for 8 seconds. And this effect cannot occur more than once every 30 seconds per target. What that means is, again, remember, we want haste. That's all we want. Right now, I have 16% haste. If I go to a PvP dummy, I should have 24, 37. I had 24, but now I have 20% haste because I have Alpha Tiger. And see this buff right here? This gets reset every time you hit a new target. And I just got a oh, haste proc. What's my haste right now? 59% haste. And I'm in half blues. It's crazy. So what you want to do with your Alpha Tiger, and you see how fast my globals are. That's that's the beauty of it. The more the more the more haste you have, the more the faster globals, the more damage you could do. So you want an Alpha Tiger. A little trick you could do with Alpha Tiger is if you you could get this off pets, you can get this off totems. So what you want to do, you get this off wild imps that demon warlocks have. So what you want to do is you just want to hit a new target pretty much every. Every time Alpha Tiger goes away, you can see that the target uh, gets a debuff when uh, after I press it. But once that goes away, just start cranking Alpha Tiger. So Hunter Pets, get Alpha Tigers off the Hunter Pets. Get Alpha Tigers off the Wild Imps Demo Warlock spawn. Get get it off Pets. Get it off Totems that Shaman spawn. Anything, any new target you can press Tiger Palm on, get the Alpha Tiger buff for the haste. And for the last one, it's really kind of uh, whatever you're queuing into. So if you're queuing into Casters or maybe if you can die in a stun, Peace Weaver with Restora was really good because it makes you immune to magical effects for you know two seconds while you're stunned, which is enough time to get out of a stun. If you're playing as double melee and you feel like you're going to absolutely get trained to the ground, Eminence is a really good option. Also really good versus RMP because I feel like most of them will try to target you. So RMP is a really good option as well. Grapple weapon, really good for arms warriors if you think you're going to want the disarm. And those are really the ones I rotate between. Eminence, Disarm, and Peace Weaver are the three that I'll rotate between depending on the situation I'm in. But I will always keep Chrysalis and Alpha Tiger. So now that we have our talents, we have our gear, we have our race, it's time to talk about rotation. Your rotation is a priority of damaging spells. Because again, 
with your ancient teachings talent you're not healing if you're not doing damage so you need to be doing damage a hundred percent of the time otherwise you're just not going to heal so the first thing you want to know the first thing we had to prioritize is your failing stomp now in pvp as well something to note is if you leave your failing stomp you get the buff for eight seconds so you can get this buff you can go back into your failing stomp and then you'll get an eight seconds so keep that in mind very very important failing stomp again with these talents right here, with getting the additional blackout kicks that strike three targets and increase the chance of resetting rising sun kick, and your awakened failing, making you have two stacks of ancient teachings up here or teaching the monastery from one tiger palm, and resets the the cooldown your abilities reset the failing stop 100 more often. Failing stop is the bread and butter of this whole rotation. You need failing stop. So usually, what I'll do is uh failing stop activates your ancient teachings. And then from there, you kind of want to do, you could build up stacks of your Teach the Monastery uh, quickly with just one Tiger Palm, but you always want to prioritize your Rising Sun Kick first. If Rising Sun Kick is your hardest hitting, hardest heal, I could check out some, some healing right here. You can see Ancient Teachings, 50% of my healing. I did a 202,000 crit with Ancient Teachings. So it's it's really strong. It was probably from Rising Sun Kick, but this is what a normal healing breakdown would look like. Um, and yeah, it's just it's just a priority list. So ancient teachings will activate your or failing stop will activate ancient teachings. If you're if you're unlucky, you can always use essence font. Tiger Palm will build up stacks of the teachings of the monastery. Always go for rising sun kick first and then do your blackout kicks after boom, it rising sun kick gets reset. And then from there it's tiger palm, blackout kick, rising sun kick, tiger palm. Blackout kick. Oh, it looks like Ancient Teachings is down. Let me let me failing stomp because I got to reset. Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Rising Sun Kick. Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Rising Sun Kick. Now, if you're mostly on, if you're if the teammates aren't, if the enemy team is not stacked up, you're not going to get quick resets. Or you have to be a little bit more lucky with your Rising Sun Kick. So on a single target, what you're going to do is your Tiger Palm. Uh, you could use your Thunder Focus T. So what Thunder Focus T does is it reduces the cooldown of your next rising. After if you use it with Rising Sun Kick, it will reduce the cooldown of your next one by nine seconds. So it makes it a three second cooldown. So Tiger Palm, Rising Sun Kick, Blackout Kicks, Rising Sun Kick, and then you just you know get a reset on Failing Stomp, and you can get a keep stacking damage with your Tiger Palm and Blackout Kicks. The most important thing though is prioritizing Rising Sun Kick, using Tiger Palms to to get stacks of teachings on the monastery and then use that on blackout kicks. It doesn't matter if they're single target or not, but obviously if you can stack up and hit more than two people or more than one person, then you're going to do more healing with your blackout kicks. I mentioned Thunder Focus T, so I want to quickly talk about it. What this does is this will empower your next spell. And if you use it on different spells, it will do different things. So for Envelope Mist, it will immediately heal for 24,000. It's also going to be instant in 10.0.7. In Renewing Mist, for Renewing Mist, it increases the duration. Vivify costs no mana. For Rising Sun Kick, the cooldown is reduced by 9 seconds. So you could Thunder Focus T, Rising Sun Kick, get Global, then Rising Sun Kick again. And then Essence Fought channels 100% faster. So... Here's your rotation with Thunder Focus T. So you get Thunder Focus T on a 30 second cooldown. You always Chi Wave first. You always go for a Chi Wave and then Failing Stomp, which is great. And then what you can do is you're going to Tiger Palm, Thunder Focus T, because it's off the GCD, Rising Sun Kick. Go for another Tiger Palm, Rising Sun Kick. And then from there, you go for your Blackout Kick to get to reset and Rising Sun Kick. And then you're going to Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Rising Sun Kick. Let me break down Chi G for you as well. Chi G is very important. So this is a one minute cooldown, it's a three minute cooldown right here but you use the get the celestials which reduce the, which reduce the cooldown of chiji by two minutes but reduces the duration to 12 seconds i think what is it originally for what tw i think it's like 24 seconds or something like that so what chiji does open her back up where's chiji is you summon her and it when you use blackout kick rising sun kick or spinning crane kick you heal allies so you do a ray damage and then each time you do that, it reduces... Every time you use a Blackout Kick, Rising Sun Kick, or Spinning Crane Kick, you get a stack that reduces the cooldown of by 33%, the, the cast time. At three stacks, it makes it instant. And a Chi-Chi also makes you immune to movement pairing effects. So if you feel like you're constantly being slowed by DKs, um, Shaman, Boomies, anything that has a spam will slow, and you need to get healing out, use chi and just start doing damage. So... What this means is you want to get to three stacks. You want to use your Blackout Kick, Rising Sun Kick, or Spinning Crane Kick. You don't really want to use Spinning Crane Kick, but Blackout Kick, Rising Sun Kick, three times to get Instant Velvet Mist. But if you are paying attention, your Blackout Kick with this hits targets, hits three targets. So 
if you have a tiger palm or from your failing self already stacked up two stacks, you'll get it instantly. Oh, something to note is these stacks right here. It says two stacks, but those are just the the, the passive. This is actually gonna this is gonna make blackout kick hit three times. Just so just in case you're single, I could do the single target just so it's a little bit easier to understand. Let me get a reset my rising sun kick. Um, or am I failing some really quick? Okay. So if you're a single target, right, and you only have one person hit, your blackout kick strikes three targets. So it's gonna hit one target, but these two stacks are still gonna hit three times. So for Chi G, what you want what I tend to do with Chi G is I will failing stomp. I'll cancel these real quick. Tiger Palm to get two stacks. And then I'll Chi G blackout kick. And you get the envelopment miss. Always. You get the instant enveloping miss because those two stacks, even though it's two stacks, it still hits three times. And then from there, it's just your simple it's the same rotation. Use your envelopment mist on whoever's taking damage. And you can keep extending it or up to a hundred percent, um, up to like you know, 14 seconds or whatever. Uh, you could keep re um, refreshing those enveloping mist, and you just keep doing it over and over again. And that's on one minute cooldown; it lasts 12 seconds. So you got to go like 48 seconds without it again. But that's fine because you just have so much damage and healing. Use it when you see major cooldowns being used, and for the most part, you should be able to heal most damage. All right, here's a rotation recap. You're always going to failing stomp to activate your ancient teachings. Use your chi wave off cooldown, as, or if someone's trying to get a restealth, it's pretty good. It bounces. It's a decent heal, but don't prioritize it. If you know if someone's dying, don't press Rising Sun. Don't press, you know, <laughs> Chi Wave. Um, always try to stay in your failing stomp. If you feel like you're getting kited out, you could always, you know, put, you know, try to run back into it. Try to rob the enemies back into your your failing stomp. Oh, maybe leg sweep so that they stay there. Just always try to get back to your failing stomp. Or you know, if you have a reset, use it for when the, t the enemy gets stunned. Failing stomp, Chi Wave. Use your, tight, use your Rising Sun Kick off cooldown. Very, very important. That is the most important spell that you have. And then from there, your Tiger Palm, Blackout Kicking, Rising Sun, sun Kick. Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Rising Sun Kick. Use your resets of failing when you start to run out of Ancient Teachings or if the teammate moves so or if the enemy moves. So if the enemy is start, you know, starting to kite away, save it. Boom. Leg Sweep. Swap over. Start doing your damage. Start doing your damage. Boom. Get your blackout kicks. On single target, it is a little bit more rough, but you still get the resets on your rising sun kicks. And you get your blackout kicks. Boom. Nope. Didn't get it. Oh, I got it this time. Got the rising sun kick. Tiger palm. Blackout kick. Rising sun kick. Didn't get I did get the reset. Wow. So that's really good. With Alpha Tiger, always try to switch targets. So you got your switch targets between pets, totems, anything. Players, it doesn't matter who you're hitting. As long as it's someone new within 30 seconds, get that haste buff. So you can your globals are faster, so you can do more damage. Now if you have Thunder Focus T up, your rotation is going to be almost exactly the same. You're going to use your Failing Stomp, use your Chi Wave, and from there, you're going to use your Thunder Focus T on the GCD, Rising Sun Kick, Tiger Palm again, Rising Sun Kick, Blackout Kick once you finish those, and then from there, it's the same exact rotation. Just prioritize your Rising Sun Kick, use your Tiger Palms to get stacks of your, your Ancient Teachings, Teaching the Monastery. They changed the uh, name in uh, from Shadowlands to Dragonflight, and from there, you're just doing the same thing over and over again it does take a little bit getting used to but you will absolutely get the hang of it if you practice i have spent and when i tell you i have no lifed and tested my rotation on dummies for hours that's exactly what i've done i have done that so many times just because i love the rotation it's so it's smooth it's just a smooth rotation that you can absolutely if you practice you can get it down very quickly um but it does take time it does take time but once you get it down it's it's easy you now your rotation down. You have Chi G now. Again, same thing. Failing stomp. You can use your Chi Wave. What you're gonna do is you're gonna build up your Tiger Palm stacks. So you got two stacks. You're gonna Chi G. You're gonna blackout kick. You get an instant enveloping mist. Then you're gonna rising sun kick. Tiger palm. Blackout kick. Got the reset. Use your enveloping mist. Use your rising sun kick. Use your tiger palms. Get your blackout kicks. You get another one. Boom. You then use your rising sun kick. Use your tiger palm again. And Chi G's gone. So normally a good a good Chi G you can get two to three, maybe even three to four involvement mists that are instant. Put them on whoever's taking damage. Keep extending it with Rising Sun Kick, especially with the Overflowing Mist, and your teammates will be more than fine. Now, I've mentioned before that you are going to be in the thick of it. You're going to be, you're in the fight. This isn't a normal play style for Mistweaver. So you are going to get swapped to, and you are going to get targeted from time to time. 
you're going to want to know how to rotate your defensives. Now, normally what you want to do is you just want to port first. I would recommend if you are feeling like you're going to get targeted, maybe drop disable and go escape from reality. Again, that, that's the one flex talent I, I can think of um, and that I do like. So what you, normally what you do if targets start training you, just, just pour it out. Just You're safe here. And if they chase you, they're probably not going to chase you. And because you're a fist weave, you want to get back in the fight ASAP, boom, port back and once you're healthy and you're in there. So that's your first offensive. Always port. From there, you have one, two, three. You have about three solid. You have four. One, two. You have four solid options on what you should rotate. Now, most of the time, this can be used in solo shuffle. So normally, my first cooldown is always like four pro, especially if it's major defensive. If I'm playing against uh, Windwalker and they pop Serenity, uh, I David Harm, I, in my experience, is not good enough. <laughs> it's just not good enough. So I usually Fort Brew and like Healing Elixir just because you get the uh, Fort Brew gives you more health. So your Healing Elixirs are better. So that's if I see a very major cooldown, Serenity, like Arms Warriors, like spearing me, you know, multiple targets are doing their burst rotations, you know, the burst cooldowns, I'll Fort Brew. Uh, from there, you know, use your Healing Elixirs when you're low on health and when you're, you know, taking a little bit of damage. It's really, really good. It's instant. It's off the GCD. Really solid. So you can just like, what you can do is you can always like do some damage with, and then healing elixir yourself and just keep doing damage because it's off the GCD. And then most of the time you'll be fine. Then you have Dampen Harm or Diffuse Magic. So what, uh, what Diffuse Magic does, for some reason it's bugged in my action bar. So let me see. Where's Diffuse Magic? So what Diffuse Magic does, it, it reduces the magic damage you take by 60% for 6 seconds and transfers all current harmful magical effects on you back to the original caster. So if you have a stable affliction on you, you can dispel it, and then it will go back to the uh, affliction warlock, which is pretty solid. It actually does damage, which is kind of funny. Um, so obviously use Diffuse Magic against magic damage. Rep Pallies do have magic damage, just keep that in mind. DKs have magic damage, so you can use a very good versus them. Obviously it's good versus Warlock, Shadow Priest Mages, all those casters. Dampen Harm reduces all damage you take by 20 to 50% for 10 seconds, with larger attacks being reduced by more. So, uh, you know, Chaos Bolt, for example, just got buffed. Doesn't say damage, does big damage. Dampen Harm might actually be more useful versus Chaos Bolt, just because it's probably not actually this... Diffuse magic reduces damage to, uh, taken by 60%. So it's probably not. But if you don't have diffuse magic, Dampen Arm is a good option. Also really good for, you know, any melee like arms warriors that have like 120k mortal strikes. Really good versus them. So again, you need to rotate your defensives depending on the situation. Always port first. Then from there, you know, get you know, top yourself off, obviously. And then you could just port back into the fight. Maybe throw an Envelope Mist on yourself. Roll back in and then extend those hots, right? Because you can keep extending them. So that's really good. Get a free vault miss without being interrupted is always not bad. It's also always pretty solid. Uh, from there, use your healing elixirs when you're getting low or if you have four per up or whatever. Um, diffuse magic versus magic damage, damage armor versus physical damage, and that's pretty much it. One last defensive that you want to rotate is Restoral. So again, I mentioned it earlier, Restoral can be used while stunned. And if you match it with Peace Weaver, it makes you immune to magical effects. One little thing I do want to note, it does work with Peace Weaver. This is a bug. I don't know why. I reported on beta. I don't know how many times. Peace Weaver does work with Restoral. Even though it's read it out, doesn't matter. It does work. So you, it, it's actually really easy once you use Restoral. If you're stunned and people are targeting you, press it. Um, you can see I still get the Peace Weaver buff right here. Still works the Peace Weaver. And yeah, just use it when you're at like 50% health or if you see a Mind Games coming in, a Chaos Bull coming in, anything like that, just use your Restoral and you'll be fine. Macros, I don't really have too many macros for Fist Weaving. I have a Dash Use 13, 14 for my um, Trinkets, which I think everybody should have. What this does, this is slot 13, this is slot 14, so you don't never have to drag your Trinket onto your bar ever again. From there, I don't really do too many. I do have Focus Macros for Paralysis. And kick, kick is obviously really important now that you're gonna be in the fight. You kind of want to, you want to have kick. So I have arena one, two, three kicks. I think I have a focus kick. Um, very, very important. You don't miss your kicks on warlocks that are using precognition though. Very, very important. Um, oh, invoke Chigi. So this changes the whichever invoke I use. You know, Yulon or Chigi. And then it also has my on use trinket right here, which has a ton of haste, which gives me a lot of main stats. So every minute I can just do a ton of damage that returns into healing. Um, Life Cocoon, this macro, I say it every single video. Very, very important. This one just makes it so you never have to, you never life cocoon someone who's dead or like mind control ever again. So use this macro. It also has a bunch of toys in it. I, that's why you'll see when I life cocoon, I like, oh, where are my fireworks? Oh, there's no fireworks. Oh, wait, maybe I don't use the macro on this guy now that I think about it. 
there we go. There's the fireworks and all that. So that's funny. Um, from the uh, dispel macros. So I don't know if I have. Where are they? Um, I should have them. Uh, Tiger's Lust, one, two, three. Really important. And target for yourself. Tiger's Lust is important because, again, you need uptime. If you're not doing damage, you're not healing. So keep that in mind. Tiger's Lust. Um, and then from there, I think the only other one is my Dispel Macro, but I don't know quite know where it is. Oh, this guy's this guy's macro is freaking. Oh my god, his macro is freaking out right now. Um, oh, Party One, Party Two, right here. So Dispel Party One, Party Two. This is for any healer, not just fist weaving. Oh, his macro is also freaking out again. I don't have any other. Yeah. Oh, and Arena One Two Three disarms. I do have disarm Arena One Two Three. So I just like having re One One Two Three macros for Arena disarm paralysis focus uh, paralysis kicks and uh dispel for your teammates so again macro is nothing too crazy for fist weaving as far as best team compositions i mostly use fist weaving for solo shuffle so there's not really a main comp you're going to use in twos anything tanky mistweaver assassination rogue mistweaver feral druid because they have the consistent stuns to keep people in place so you could stay in your failing stomp um so anything like that for twos for threes again anything tanky quite literally find a brewmaster monk if you don't have a brewmaster monk turbo TSG, anything with double melee, you will do fine with. But yeah, basically, you just want to play with melee that can keep themselves alive. I have played with Demo Warlock, though, and Demo is pretty solid. I'm not going to lie. Went 32 and 5. So yeah, Demo is also really good. And that is pretty much it. I will try to add a fist weave game or two at the end of this. But that's it for the fist weaving guide. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. I am more than happy to answer any questions. I'm hoping this answered any questions people had. I. You know, I've seen a, the popularity of Fist Review is really nice. So I'm happy to give my knowledge. And again, any questions, let me know. I will be answering any questions at all. And that's it for me. Hope everyone's a fantastic day. Hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you later. Nice. I don't need to port this because he's stunned. Well, how did my failing stomp go that direction? Song here? Don't about myself. Son, shrink it. Where you going, baby? Come on over here. Where you going? I just want a Todd. Big damage. Got turtle. Really good. Wrap that clone. Tigers lost myself. Big damage here. Taunt. I taunted the pet. No, maybe I didn't. Getting clone. Nice kick. Cocoon here. Stun this. Barkskin from the Druid. Trying to song here. Didn't get it. Big damage here. Taunt pet. In case he tries to trap me. Incap Druid full here. Got it. Iron Bark though. Taunt pet. Hit the pets. Tigers lost myself. Stunned here. Taunt pet. Nice. Nice. Really good grip here. Disarm Hunter here. So even if I get CC, it doesn't do a lot of damage. He actually went into that. Beast your Wrath into that. Go back to my Failing Stomp. Rot back. He disengages into Rot. Reverse that back. Do damage here. Stun this guy full. Incap Druid full. Taunt pet. So I don't get trapped. Got a reset. Big damage here. Taunt pet. Big damage. He can't be peeled. Oh, I can't be peeled. Belt missed here. Big damage. Big damage. Rising sun kick. Todd, 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 Todd. Got him.